everybody welcome back to another video i hope you are having a fantastically awesome day so far my day is going pretty good although the weather could be a little bit better but what do you expect it is winter um today we are reacting to the xb70 valkyrie america's mark 3 super bomber now i've never even heard of this uh this was a suggestion from tom thank you very much for the email tom uh so i'm quite looking forward to seeing this especially looking at the thumbnail i know sometimes they put misleading thumbnails on this channel but i'm really looking forward to this uh before we get into today's video however I do want to thank everyone who's come over to the family channel and showed their support. Thank you so much. You guys are legends. Cat was really nervous. I was terrified yesterday filming with Cat. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. The link to that channel will be down in the description as well. But yeah, thank you to whoever you are. Well, to all of you who have come over to that channel and shown your support. You guys are legends. Anyway, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, let's check out the XB70 Valkyrie, America's Mark, Mark, Mark 3 Super Bomber. Oh, the, the. See this plane? It's America's Mach 3 Holy super bomber crap. that you never heard about. Spot on. I've never heard of that. That what the hell? The North American XB70 Valkyrie was the largest and fastest bomber ever built by the United States, but the massive six-engine Mach 3 capable jet the, oh. never entered production. Only one surviving prototype sits in a museum in Dayton, Ohio, even as the Boeing B-52 it was supposed to one day replace continues to soldier on. <laughs> Named Valkyrie after the female battle spirits of Norse mythology, the bomb... That is a beautiful looking plane. Bomber, plane, whatever you want to call it. That is... I like that. I'm quite interested to see why it's only like a prototype. Named Valkyrie after the female battle spirits of Norse mythology, the bomber was built to penetrate Soviet air defenses in a nuclear war and deliver thermonuclear bombs on targets. The XB-70 was 196 feet long, 31 feet tall at the tail, and had a maximum gross weight of 521,000 pounds. The Valkyrie was fabricated using stainless steel honeycomb sandwich panels and titanium. It was designed to make use of a phenomenon called compression lift hmm. achieved when the shock wave generated by the airplane flying at supersonic speeds supports part of the airplane's weight. Hmm. This unique characteristic reduced drag and was one of the secrets of the XB-70's performance. The idea behind the XB-70 originated in the 1950s when it was assumed even greater speeds and altitudes would enable American bombers to survive against Soviet air defenses unmolested on their way to... I'm trying to think what it looks like because I usually give things a like a comparison, don't I? Like, oh, that looks like a wasp or that looks like something. I can't think of what this looks like. It looks mean as though. It looks so mean. Delivering their doomsday payloads. Yeah. At the time, the only effective defense against bombers were fighters and anti-aircraft artillery. Even then, anti-aircraft guns were only marginally effective, and interceptors were increasingly mm. challenged by ever-improving bomber performance. But the introduction of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s changed that picture dramatically. Suddenly, the XB-70 were much more vulnerable, and even its Mach 3 speeds could not guarantee its survival. To cope with the rising threat of Soviet missiles, the United States Air Force began to fly missions at a lower altitude where the enemy radar would have more trouble tracking its target. But at these lower altitudes, the XB-70 Valkyrie would be much less effective. So much, in fact, that it would not perform better than the B-52, the bomber it was meant to replace. Mission range and fuel economy would also suffer when flying lower. Another nail in the coffin for the XB-70 project was the development of ICBM missiles in the late 1950s. The Valkyrie was specifically designed to carry the heavy nuclear weapons, but now the ICBMs threatened the role of the aircraft. President hmm. Eisenhower was not a big believer in the Valkyrie project, as he saw no real need for the aircraft. His I initially thought it was a beautiful looking plane, but the more I see it, I'm just like, hmm, I don't know now. I don't know if I like it very much. Um, I don't know. It looks mean, though. It looks... I'm, I'm trying to figure out... It looks like... I'll put the insect up on screen if I remember what I'm, what I'm talking about. That's what I think it looks like. Because they look small and dainty, but they can be really, really aggressive. I'll see if I can remember. I'll find it. The main points against it were the same as the above-mentioned ones. 
Rockets and missiles were a threat, and ICBMs were a cheaper, more effective way of doing the same thing, he said. He also pointed out that the aircraft, that was still in development, would be obsolete by the time it was ready for full-scale manufacturing. Fair Technology enough. would simply have caught up to the Valkyrie. The Eisenhower administration cut the project to a single prototype. Kennedy, however, endorsed the XB-70, and it actually became part of his election campaign to do so. But at the time he became president, the XB-70... <laughs> it looks like a robot dog, look. <laughs> Don't you think? I, I think it looks like a robot dog there. ...election campaign to do so. Yeah. But at the time he became president, the XB-70 Valkyrie project had already cost equal to almost $7 billion today. Holy smokes. A hefty smokes. sum for a bomber. Holy so in smokes. The um, aircraft carrier was only $8.3 billion only, but just let's compare. ...billion dollars today. A hefty sum for a bomber. So in 1961, he canceled the project. It had become too expensive and unnecessary. Instead, Kennedy changed the XB-70 program to a research project. The Valkyrie was perfect for exploring the effects of supersonic flight and propulsion. North American Aviation completed the first prototype called AV-1 in May 1964 in Palmdale, California. A second prototype, the AV-2, quickly followed in October the same year. Huge. A third prototype was planned but got canceled. In September 1964, the first XB-70 embarked on its first flight. The Valkyrie first went supersonic when it reached Mach 1.1 on the third test flight on October 12th. Praying Mantis. That's what I think. Sorry, I, it came to me. 1964. It first surpassed Mach 3 on October 14th, 1965, where the AV-1 reached Mach 3.02 at 70,000 feet. The AV-2 followed its sister's footsteps and became the one to hold the record for the highest speed of the two prototype aircraft. In April 1966, the AV-2 reached and maintained a top speed of Mach 3.08 for 20 minutes. A month later, the AV-2 flew at Mach 3.06 for 32 minutes and covered a distance of 3,900 kilometers or 2,400 miles in the 91 minutes flight time. Tragedy struck on June 8, 1966, oh, when no. the second XB-70 prototype was destroyed in a crash after a mid-air oh. collision with its F-104N chase plane. Two people were killed and one was severely injured during the accident. The loss of the second aircraft, injured. which was much more capable... I know this sounds a bit like, how do you get injured at that height and still survive? That's a... That's like miracle stuff. Sorry, guys. I'm the lots. I'm trying to sort it out. I'll get there. I'll get there. Well, then the first was a huge setback. Testing, however, continued until February 4th, 1969. Ultimately, the first XB-70 logged 83 flights, totaling 160 hours and 16 minutes, while the second XB-70 hmm. logged 46 flights, totaling 92 hours and 22 minutes, according to NASA. The XB-70 Valkyrie last went supersonic in December 1968. In February the following so year, the Valkyrie AV-1 took its final flight to the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. It's still on display there. I'd like to go and have the a look XB at that. The XB-70 Valkyrie was indeed ahead of its time. Despite a turbulent life from development to retirement, the futuristic supersonic bomber amazes with its looks, performance, and history. It was a product of the Cold War, where experts thought that Mach 3 speeds and higher altitudes could protect a bomber carrying nuclear weapons. But development costs and advances in technology eventually made the XB-70 Valkyrie unnecessary. Instead, the bomber was used in a research hmm. project aimed to study supersonic flight. The Valkyrie generated valuable <laughs> insights about super. I was just going to say, at least it didn't go to waste. You know, they've put it to use to learn and improve on other things so at least it didn't go to waste but it's, it, it is a bit of a shame that it never got there's like not more flight footage of it i'd love to see this thing in action flight. the valkyrie generated valuable insights about supersonic flight insights that were later used in other military aircraft the crash in 1966 became a darker <laughs> chapter in the history of the aircraft but the remaining the landing valkyrie gear on continued fire. its work in research and eventually went on display in 1969 in a museum in Ohio. The XB-70, while a technological wonder at the time, 
was the wrong plane for the wrong time. It came at a time when ballistic missiles were thought to be supplanting manned bombers. Moreover, it was being developed at a time when it was increasingly apparent mm. that high speed and high altitude were not sufficient protection against surface-to-air missiles or the next generation of Soviet fighters. Though its intended role as a strategic bomber was unsuccessful, the Valkyrie project contributed to later projects like the B-1B Lancer bomber, the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, and other That's projects. Beautiful. More's the pity. Oh, we someone like actually sent me a link to that, the SR-71. It's another one I've never heard of. Uh, we'll be checking that one out in the future, I think. Contributed to later projects like the B-1B Lancer bomber, the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, and other projects. <sighs> that looks More's mean the pity. as. It would likely have been the fastest bomber ever. Maybe they'll show some footage of it flying now, because they usually play some clips at the end. See? Sorry to pause again. Looking at it from above, it looks freaking awesome. But in this position, it doesn't look all that great, does it? I don't think, anyway. It, it was... When I first saw it, I thought it looked amazing. And then the more I've watched it, it it's sort of worn off. I, it's cool from above. That sounded like an alien. <laughs> oh my god! He may have picked up uh, E.T.'s mum here calling for him. I don't know. Like, I like, I love it and I hate it at the same time. It's quite a weird one, isn't it? It's not like you're... I want to say average plane, but there's none, none of these planes are average. But do you know what I mean? It's not your, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to find the words to describe this plane. I think it looks awesome, but from a certain position. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.